welcome to another episode of the Blender Art Critique. I am your host, Andrew Price, and we're going to be critiquing some Blender renders. So we got about 100 images sent through the uh, Blender Guru Facebook page over the last month um, that used the hashtag BG Critique, which is how you send in your images. And um, I have picked out about 10. <laughs> about 10. I didn't even get the exact number. Uh, this one. Also this one. I'll just, I'll cycle through them so you can actually see. Um, but I tried to pick images that had a lot going on with them. Uh, some of them were too simple, like it was just one object. Um, so I, I've tried to pick ones that have a lot going on and um, there's a little bit of variance between them. Like some people really skilled, some people really beginners. Um, and then to end on one, I'm gonna end on my own. One of my old renders from like five years ago to show you that I look at myself with the same critique brush, right? Um, it, the whole point of this series isn't to, you know, like degrade people or, or like insult them. That's not at all what this is about. This is because we are artists and the only way we improve is when people point out the things that are wrong in our work or enough time has passed that we can look back on our old work and then critique it with fresh out, fresh eyes. But anyways, having, having somebody critique your work can be like a shortcut to uh, faster learning. So um, that's really what this is about. And I'm hoping that you can learn a few things from all the things that I mentioned in this video. Enough talk, let's get to it. This first image comes from an, uh, a guy with four names. Eric Ozil Malacara Maldonado. <laughs> right. Uh, I shouldn't laugh at people's names. I, it's just that that name just to me sounds like an absolute nightmare on all the government forms. You got to fill it out. <laughs> There'd never be enough space. Anyway. Um, okay. So you said that, oh yeah, you said this is your first project right after finishing the beginner series, the, uh, the donut series, which is incredible. If this is the first image you've, you've made after that donut series, congratulations. Cause this is a lot of work. Um, I think it probably would have taken me a couple of years after my first beginner series when I was learning to, uh, to be able to make an image like this. So you are well and truly on your way, my friend. Um, but of course, got to improve. So let's talk about the things that I think are wrong with it. So the biggest, the focal element for this scene is this big transformer right there. And part of that has to do with the texture, which is the problem. So I had a look at, mo at some reference images online to figure out what these transformers look like. Um, and most of them were pretty clean, pretty clean. Um, there was one that I thought you probably used as the reference photo because it's got a little bit of rust on it. And I thought, right, I reckon he probably used that one because, you know, everybody uses Google images when they're looking for reference and this one popped up. So I'm, I'm assuming this is the one you've used. So the texture that you've chosen, this rust texture, it's too low res for that size of a thing, in my opinion. Um, like the rust just looks too big. Like it's just bulky and these spots and everything. It's just too much. I think it doesn't fit the scale. Just scale wise, I don't think it fits this, uh, this transformer. The biggest problem though, is that the texture itself has nothing to do with the model. And that is the biggest problem with using a rust texture um, and applying it to, uh, to an object because, and I made this mistake a lot when I was getting started as well, because it looks so tempting. Like you've got, you know, you've got an object that needs some rust on it, not everywhere, but needs some rust. And then you've got this texture that has a little bit of rust here and there. And you go, Hey, I'll UV unwrap it. I'll slap that texture on here. And look at that. It looks like a rusty, you know, looks like a rusty transformer, but, and that, that would probably work for like a low res game asset. But if it's something that is the, the focal element of an image, um, you got to put a little bit more thought into it than that. So I personally would use a program like substance painter because you can actually paint with particles. Like you can make rust dribble down an object just by throwing some particles at it's pretty, pretty fun actually. Um, but you could also just do it with blender. You just do a little paint and then like smudge it down using the smudge tool or something. Um, and if I were you, I would make the, um, because I think the reason that there is this, you know, this dribbling effect going down there is because the lid here has a lot of rust right on that corner. So it's sort of built up and it dribbles down. Um, in your case, your lid is very clean. So you wouldn't have that, but you could make some, you know, dribbling effect down there like that. 
And just having it relate to the model in some way will just improve the realism by a lot. Um, because this, you've got this like seam across here. And yeah, you could say, okay, well maybe there is a seam for the transform. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but let's say there was. I think there's also a hinge there. Like, eh, it's not really working. And you've got this big, big thing of, of uh, rust. You've also, you can see the lighting in the texture. So this, I'm guessing, is a texture that was rotated 90 degrees that way because the light is like from the sky, which was going in that direction in the actual texture, because you can see that the shadow is built up underneath it. So it doesn't match the lighting of your scene as well. So overall, just ditch that texture and just try to paint in your own. Um, doesn't have to be fancy, um, but have a go. <laughs> All right, um, and the second biggest problem, I mean, yeah, the same problem goes, by the way, with the, uh, the light here, the pole, um, and that thing as well. So just, just work on those. But the other biggest problem is the power pole itself. This texture is, um, it's well and truly way too stretched and way too big. I'm oh, sorry, the, the texture is, is too small for the scale of that pole. So it looks like probably like a 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter photo of like a, a tree bark thing that has been stretched like 10 times to be like two meters or something like that. Um, it also, it looks like the wrong sort of wood for a pole. Like that looks like actual live bark that's like flaky and you could pull it off. Whereas most power poles have been like shaven and stripped down, I think, right? That's how they make them look so smooth. Um, YouTube connects everyone. I'm sure there's one guy out there who like <laughs> shaves off the bark of a pole. Maybe he can chime in. Uh, but that that's the biggest thing. So I would just get a proper, like really clean looking um, wood. And I just, just put that on there and make sure that you scale it up so that it actually fits the pole. Um, but that's it. I mean, other than that, like there's nothing actually interesting going on with this image, just to let you know as well. Like if you were to show somebody this image online, like post it and say, hey, can I have some critiques? You're probably gonna, not gonna get a lot of comments because there's nothing really that interesting about it. Sorry to say, it's just, it's a pole looking up at, you know, looking into the sky. There's nothing really in it for people. Um, that's fine though. If this is just, you want, you did it as a learning experiment, you wanted to make something realistic, go for it. That's, that's a really great idea, but just know if you want to share it with people, don't get too discouraged if you get no replies. It's just that there's nothing really interesting about it. Anyways, that's it, Eric. Thank you very much for sending it in and congrats. Your first image after doing the beginner tutorial. That's, that's very impressive. All right, uh, that's a simpler name. I can pronounce that. Lucas Tom has sent in this image. I'm not sure if you still do critiques. I do, about once a month, generally speaking. But if you do, I would appreciate you take a look at my newest work on ArtStation, which is this one here. Took a long time to put together, so I would appreciate some critique. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so Lucas, um, I'll just point out the glaring problems that I noticed first thing when I open it up. And that is that, uh, actually I did a little bit of drawing on it before. The, uh, the wrinkles on this big giant here, his face, it's, the resolution is way too low um, for something of that scale. If you didn't have the guy sitting on top, you could maybe get away with it because you could say like, hey, maybe it's like a baby face that's a monster or something. But because there's a guy sitting on it, we know that the size of his head is at least like two meters high. So these wrinkles, these folds need to be like four or five times sharper. Like the resolution needs to go to um, extreme, extreme lengths. You should be able to see like the pores. Um, like it would just, it would be a lot more, uh, there'll be a lot more detail there um, than there is currently. The other problem is that the anatomy doesn't make a lot of sense. Like all these wrinkles and folds that are going over his eye, um, it looks like you just took a couple of photos of eyes online and you saw that the wrinkles, the way that the eyelids fold up and you went, wrinkles. Um, so you've got, I'm sure there should be a name for it, but it's like the Wi-Fi effect. Um, <laughs> You've got rings on folds of folds of folds of folds. It's like he's made of a stretchy rubber and he's just sort of like an accordion or something. Um, it just, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, and, and the same thing goes down here underneath his face, the jowls, this weird neck thing. Um, yeah, so you could argue, yeah, it's, a, it's not a human, it's, it's a monster or whatever. It doesn't have to have wrinkles and folds in the right place. No, it does. It really does. Um, because 
the, the audience that is looking at it are people and the closest thing we can relate it to is a human. And especially when it's that m- resembling a human, it's got a nose, a mouth, it's got one eye, but it's got two, uh, two eyes, two arms, everything else. Um, we're going to, it, it should look mostly like a human. And at the moment, the anatomy just doesn't make any sense. It's sort of just wrinkles and stuff everywhere. Okay. The other big problem is that you've got, uh, a hat tilted down over his face. And the reason that looks odd is that if that was there, he wouldn't be able to see anything. So the only reason that that could have happened and he's doing it is a challenge. He's like trying to see how long he can go without looking. Maybe that's the concept of your image actually. Like blind, like just following something. I don't know. Is that a political piece? (laughs) Is that Trump? I don't know. Um, but it, it, it's, I don't know, it's, it's kind of funny because I've seen so many renders over the years which has this going on, the hat pulled down over the face. I don't know why you've done it, obviously, because it's, it's a lot easier than having to model the whole face. So you're saving time, but it just looks odd. So yeah, the number of times you see a render where somebody's like, it's a forest and there's a guy like sleeping against a tree and there's the hat pulled down <laughs> over his head. It's like, yep, saved a lot of time on that one. Um, but anyways, that's just what I would point out. It is very noisy as well. So, you know, that's, that's very easy to clear up though. Just render it longer. All right. Thank you for sending that in Lucas. I'm hoping I didn't, uh, dampen your spirits too much. Again, it is just to help you improve. All right. This next image comes from a Manish Tiagi. Manish Tiagi. Sorry. Got to get a little drink there. And you said... I made this bike. (laughs) Please critique it. Sure. Why not? So biggest thing, biggest thing, the first thing, really the only thing you notice when you open it up is, hmm, what's going on with that bike tire, (laughs) right? Um, Yeah, that that texture on that bike tire there, um, you've got to have proper detail there. It looks like you've got two textures. I don't know what's going on. You've got this weird like ribbed sort of thing but you've also got some shading that seems to be at a different interval it's very 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 odd um it just looks immediately wrong when you when you open it so um actually it was the first tutorial that i ever made was how to model a car tire because it was like nine ten years ago and um the blender community was very small and i'm like oh i figured out how do you model a tire so you use an array modifier, you model one piece of the tire and then you use an array and then a curve modifier to curve it around. And I I did a tutorial on it. So if you want to watch my very first tutorial on it, you could, I'll put it in the YouTube description. You can all cringe at it. Um, But yeah, so that is how you would create, you know, a proper bike tire, which looks something like that. Like the detail really is there. Um, You've got to be able to see it. It's not something generally, unless you've got a really clean displacement texture. It's not something that you can usually do with a texture. You can you can fudge it by making the tie in motion, which is how a lot of people do it, but you know, it's sitting on a, a showroom floor. So <laughs> um, the other problem I noticed is that you've got the fishbowl effect. Hey, the return of the fishbowl. Um, this is a very common problem that I see. Um, and I like bringing it up because it's very easy to fix. Um, if you've got a glass object, whenever you're rendering glass, if it, unless it's got liquid inside it, which is why this looks like it's got liquid in it, it looks like a fishbowl, um, unless it has liquid in it, you want to make sure that it has another face on the other side of the glass because the otherwise the glass shader will treat the entire object like it is made of glass, like a solid glass object. So all you need to do is select that, uh, that glass bulby thing there and then add a solidify modifier to it, which gives it thickness. And the moment you do that, it looks like glass. Um, So do that, and that's the quickest fix that you can do. Um, The other thing, it looks very dim, like a little bit like, "Hmm, what am I looking at here? So if I were you, I would brighten it up. I'm just gonna do this roughly here to show you what I mean. But I would brighten it up like that, eh, sort of like that because you want to be able to let people see your work, right? Now, why does it keep going back? What's going on? Hang on. What the heck was that? What's up with Photoshop? I don't know. It keeps snapping back. That's really weird. It's probably something to do with this tablet, I bet. Why can't they figure out tablets? You know, like Windows. 
right? There are people with tablets and they want to be able to draw on them. And so you've got the pressure sensitivity. We want to be able to do that on our Windows PC. And then Microsoft is like, I know what you want. You want flicks. You want gestures. You want that annoying circle thing that pops up whenever you hold the thing on it. It's just like, oh, stop it. Please just let us use a tap. And it's so hard to turn off. There's like five things you've got to... Anyways, I'm just going on a rant there. Anyways, um, yeah, so I would brighten it up. Brighten it up a lot. Um, the other thing I would do is the, the roughness, the smoothness on this, um, whatchamacallit, this chrome, it's too smooth. Um, even though you've only got a little bit smooth, it's still too much. Like most, if you look at chrome, it's pretty sharp. Like you should be able to see the detail of that tree or whatever is in the reflection there. Um, yeah, it should be a lot sharper than that. The other thing is that the reflection in here with the tree and, and all that other stuff, um, yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense for this scene because it's, you know, it looks like it's been lit in a studio, like a studio lighting, and yet you've got an outdoor HDR. So a little bit conflicting. See if you can find a photography studio HDR online. I think they do exist. So just bring one of them up. It's pretty easy to fix. Um, yeah, that's the critiques that I would give for you, Manish. So thank you for sending in your work. Um, oh, there was one other thing, wasn't there? Oh, yeah, what is that thing? There's some weird little object. It's like a straight line going across there. Yeah, that's that's another one. But anyways, thank you, Manish. Masoud, Masoud Zamani. It's more than six years that I'm following your videos and tutorials. Thank you for that. I submit this one. Okay, thank you, Masoud, and thank you for watching my tutorials. I guess. Uh, okay, so this one's very interesting. You've you've done a really good job. There's a lot going on um, with this character. It's very. Um, it's, that's a very tricky one to make, so well done on pulling this off. Um, however, from an artistic standpoint, I think it could be improved in a lot of ways. So for starters, it's all this stuff on here. There's nothing there. There's nothing really... We don't need to see that. It doesn't help us understand this image anymore. Um, yes, it's a tree, and maybe we need to know that it's a tree, but you could still get that across without any of that there. Having all this here just distracts you from the main character, which is this guy right here. You do want to leave a little bit of eye room because he's looking to the left, so you've got to leave a little bit of space there. You don't want to, you know, crop it like that. But, you know, a little bit like that is fine. And then I would crop the other side like that. Okay. Um, because that's, that's really what this image is about. It's about the character. And he's looking over to the left. And this, I feel like, is a much nicer crop. Okay, now looking at the actual image itself, I was I had to look at it for probably two minutes um, when I was just looking, you know, doing the pre-critiques when I opened up the images. Um, and it was only after two minutes that I realized he's got four arms. He's got those arms, these arms, like that. And also he's got his mouth down here. Like I didn't see any of that when I first... Um, open up the image. So what this means is that your character isn't very readable. Um, and readable is a word which means exactly like it sounds. You should be able to read it very easily. When you've got characters that are doing these, these poses and things like that, you want to position lights, you want to you want to, you know, make sure the composition's right. You want to make sure the silhouette, all that stuff, makes it so that the viewer can read it very well. Um, if you look at movie posters, you know, even Disney, Pixar, whatever, they have really good readability because it's a poster. It's got to be understood very quickly. So have a look at those as, as some reference. Um, but I think the majority of this comes down to the character design. Um, like I think it, with these weak arms here, like you could get away with it if there wasn't a rocket on the back because the silhouette would still be pretty clear and you would say like, oh yeah, um, I guess he's got four arms there. But um yeah, I don't know, like this thing here, I guess I thought it was a hat. Like, I guess I didn't think like, oh, it's goggles or whatever. Like, I don't know. It just, maybe people in the comments are going to say, I read it the first thing as soon as I opened it up. You're an idiot. Um, but in my opinion, it just isn't very readable. So, yeah, so I would, um, what I would do, I would bulk out the arms. Okay, so I'm giving, you know, just my opinion on how you could improve it. And part of that is the character design. So I think the arms should be more bulked out. Um, so that you can actually see them better. 
Um, I don't know how that would work. Maybe, I don't know, just draw over it. Let's just say it looked a little bit like that as opposed to the thin arms. It, it would be a lot more readable because then you could also have more reflection glinting off that arm there, like the, the reflection that, like let's say it's like that, right? And because there's a reflection there, it's got contrast and therefore your eye is able to read it a lot easier. Um, yeah, so you could have that and then like, you know, the same thing with this arm, you can make it bigger and then there's more reflection coming off it. So you just want to try and work around that. Um, now for the mouth, I don't know, it, it's an interesting idea having it all the way down there, but it's it's very odd and it just, the eye does not look there when you, when you open it up. I just thought he had a really long nose um, and no mouth or that the mouth was underneath it. So <laughs> I don't know, you could just make it smaller maybe and... I don't know, the mouth coming at, out of the nose? Like that's his talking snout at the end there? I, I don't know. It works, right? It's like an elephant, I suppose. Um, I don't know, just to me, it just looks a little funny. You've also got a weird composition with the hand appearing right where that rifle is. Um, the eye doesn't know when it opens it. Like, is he holding that gun? Or is it hanging from him? How is it hanging from him? Because his hand is right over the top of it. So it's called a tangent. So you've got a tangent confliction going on there. So um, I would move that or just get rid of it. I don't know, put it on his back or something else because it, having it right there is a little bit distracting and hard to um, hard to notice. So those are my critiques. It's, uh, you know, it's mostly character, which is, um, I mean, actually for most things, it's all personal preference anyway. Um, Maybe this was the brief that a designer gave to you and you had to stick to it, in which case I would give you critiques on you know, how you could improve the readability with the, the, the pose in relation to the camera and the lighting, trying to get it to pop where you can't see things very well. So those are my critiques for you, Masode. Uh, thank you for sending in your image. Hey, where'd the comment go? Anyway, thank you for sending it in. All right, this image uh, I really like. This one comes from Adam... Uh, oh, my face is, oh no, my face isn't blocking it. Adam Christian Skovron. Um, I'm really curious how I could improve this image. Please don't hold back. I don't think you could improve this one very much. Um, I wasn't even going to include this one in the critique, but I, I want to say well done. This is really, really good. Um, in terms of photorealism, this is great. A lot of people do the, the can and the little droplets on the can, and a lot of people get it wrong. I looked at reference photos online to compare it with this, and it is pretty darn close. The only thing you could say is like, you know, there's, it should maybe be more condensation like more of these little bubbles, you know, um, they're more tightly packed. But then if it's dried out, it could look a little bit like this as well, where there's a little bit of both. You could say maybe they should be bigger. But again, I saw reference photos that look very close to this. The only way you could really improve it, I think, um, just comes down to probably the crop like that. Crop it in a little bit like that, because that's really what this image is about. We're not looking at the table. That's very boring. The shader. So making the shader behave exactly like metal. It's more of a science than an art thing at this point. It's pretty close, but it's just those tiny details that you're missing um, that would make it make someone clue into the fact that it's not a real photo. And the other thing is, what was I going to say? Actually, I don't. I don't know. There's not much else to it. That's pretty. That's pretty darn good, honestly. That's that's fantastic. So well done. Um, it's a very boring image, though. Just so you know, same critique as I gave to Eric. It's um. You know, if you, I mean, if you showed another 3D artist this, they would be like, that's impressive. That's very realistic. Well done. Um, but if you just show it to anybody as, a, as an image, like a piece of artwork, it's nothing to it. It's like, mm, yeah, that's cool. It's cool. That's it. So as a photorealism exercise, well done. But as, a, as an art piece, um, yeah, just work on how you could make the image more interesting if that's what you want. You want a reaction from people, which most people do when they create renders. So that's just something to consider for your next piece. But as I said, Adam, there's not a lot I can say about it because you've done an outstanding job. Thumbs up. Next image. This one comes from Andre Garcia who said, Hi, Andrew Price. I'm new to 3D interior design. This is my latest design. I watched all your tutorials. I decide to focus on interior design to earn money for my life. All right, you're making a career out of this. Well then, let's get really harsh. Uh, no, um, okay, let me just hide that. 
So this image is, um, okay, first of all, I know that interior renders take a lot of work because I'm guessing you probably modeled most of this in the background. This cup, this this teapot, the, the cups, it takes forever and a lot of people don't realize that. So I first of all, just wanna say, well done. But looking at it from a purely artistic standpoint, there's a lot that isn't right about it. The biggest problem is the lighting. The lighting just feels, it feels dark, um, which is odd because if you look at some um, interior renders, like it does sort of have, you know, the same sort of brightness coming in through the window, but uh, it's also got darkness on, on the front here. In my opinion, what it's really lacking is, I don't think you've used the filmic, um, What's it called? <laughs> I can't even remember the name of it. The Filmic Color LUT system for Blender. So have a look at my tutorial on that. It's um, it's called The Secret Ingredient to Photorealism. Link is in the description. Uh, but that explains the Filmic system. The reason you need that is so that you can amp up your lighting, really pump it out from these windows without getting the blown out effects that you would get with the sRGB transform, which is what you're using currently. So that's why if you use the filmic thing, you'll be able to pump in more light into the scene and it will look drastically, drastically better for you. Uh, trust me, I, I've had this same problem so many times when I was making the Architecture Academy, which if you want to make a living out of doing architecture, um, got a bunch of tutorials there if you wanted to uh, sign up, give me some money, cha-ching. Um, but yeah, I've had this problem before and I didn't know that there was even a solution to it until I discovered like six months ago that Filmic Blender was a thing and that it's so, so, so important. So watch that video and you'll be able to pump it in there and that will enable you to get that clean, bright, modern look that you see in, um, in so many images. These are just some images that I got off Howz, which I highly recommend, Howz, H-O-U-Z-Z.com. That's the place to go to for architectural uh, reference photos. So have a look at those um, and just copy some of the lighting. You know, generally a lot of photographers now like to make an, a place look appealing. They want to pump it in with light. So if you look at like real estate photos now, they just got these huge light sources and they're just throwing light in there. It just makes it feel more alive. Like a darkened place makes you feel like a, like dark and dingy, like a cave or a cavern. Like, oh, there's some seedy folks in that pub because it's really dark. I can't see what's going on, you know? So you don't want that feeling. All right, I've riffed on the lighting enough, uh, let's talk about some other stuff. So I can see you've used the new denoiser in 2.79, which is fantastic, but you've got to use more samples because you've got this, uh, this sort of pattern going on there where it looks like it's been smoothed out um, or a higher size where it sort of blurs it over a larger surface area. Um, you're, you're the first that I've seen with this problem, by the way. So I'm, I'm assuming in the future there's going to be, a, this will be a common critique once everyone starts using the denoiser because it's so freaking awesome. Um, but yeah, you do have to have enough samples to start with. So um, yeah, the um, appearance wise, like for the kitchen, I think that you are missing a, um, a natural element, something that relates back to nature because we are human beings and we want to have some form of nature in a scene. So if you look at all good um, architectural interiors, there is a lot of nature. There's wood going along here, right? Or more wood, <laughs> right? If you see an image that doesn't have any natural material in it, it feels very cold. So if I were you, um, maybe you could get, I'll just use this one, <laughs> this is my render, which I'm gonna critique at the end, but this type of rock wall, that might actually look really good along this wall along the back there. It needs something, that, that stone sort of look, it needs something along that wall there, or wood or marble or something, but it has to have a natural element. You've got a tiny wincy wincy little bit. What's going on? Why is there suddenly noise everywhere? It's like the plane flies overhead and the guy steps outside to make a call. Ah! Um, yeah, so yeah, you gotta have a natural element. So yeah, like the concrete, it's throwing me off now. Uh, but yeah, have it, have it somewhere else. You could maybe even do like some wood on the counter. Eh, it's hard to do. Uh, cause then it, the whole thing becomes wood. Uh, but yeah, just, I think that back wall, if you did that, that would really, really lift the scene, um, a lot. Um, 
Okay, now, the other thing is uh, focal element wise, there's too much going on. You've got, you got this stuff right over there. Like, so your eyes are drawn to clear silhouettes and contrast. Um, have a look at my um, uh, composition tutorial link in the description. I hope I remember to put these links in there. Um, but we're, we're drawn to contrast. And so these are the big contrasting areas. So contrast, saturation, things like that. Um, we're drawn to a lot of different things and there's not really any one thing. Um, it also doesn't feel like this image is giving us a very appealing story like this. And again, it's the lighting, but this sort of reminds you of like a smoker's den, like, right? So an image has to say something and because the dim lighting, it's like, it doesn't say anything. This isn't a very inviting breakfast morning, right? Because it's all dark and dingy. Um, you can brighten up your orange juice here by having subsurface scattering in the shader, which if you're using 2.79, there is the principal shader, which has a little uh, sub SSS shader built into it. Could he shout any louder? I'm hoping it's not too distracting. Hopefully he's hung up. Bah. Anyway. Okay, so that's, that's, I mean, that's basically it. Um, yeah, so some subsurface scattering on the orange juice, that would really improve it. Um, and what else was I gonna say? Oh yes, design-wise, it seems a little bit conflicted, okay? So you've got this sort of traditional style teapot. You've got a modern teapot in the background there. Um, and then you've got what looks sort of like an Asian-influenced, that pattern or a, oh, what's it name? Like the Great Gatsby, that style, the Roaring Twenties. What's the name of that style? I can't even remember it. It's not Gothic. It's like uh, Bows. Uh, it's like uh, uh, industrial almost. Ah, I can't remember the word, but you know what I mean. That pattern there. So what I'm saying is you've got a mix of styles. Oh, and then this this cement roof, which doesn't match any of it. You got a mix of styles. I think it wants to be traditional in everything that's that's in here. It's like a very clean, very, you know, that, that. But you've got to get rid of the things that don't match. So you can you gotta to stick to one style, and I think right now it's a little bit all over the place. Anyways, that's enough, enough riffing. Um, but well done, um, Andre. Uh, that is that's a lot of work, as I mentioned. So well done on getting this far. I think but definitely just use the filmic color light and pump in that lighting. Experiment with it. Throw some lighting around the front here as well. So you've got it shining in across this bench here because it's very dark. And get rid of this. Oh, that was the other thing I was going to say. Get rid of this thing, the light under there. Because if this is a morning scene, you don't need to have light underneath the countertop. Just feels a little odd to me. So I, I would personally get rid of that. Anyways, thank you for sending it in. Next one by Mohammed Hamid. Did this gingerbread scene as a personal project? Awesome. Um, I wasn't gonna critique this one because I thought, hey man, like technically, this is awesome. Like what you've done, that's incredible. The amount of detail, all this stuff, whatever this stuff is, this crushed Tic Tacs, <laughs> I don't know. Looks really awesome. The uh, the frosting, the like, like look at the detail. You put like these little, um, the icing on top. Like every year my mom makes a gingerbread house for Christmas and this looks honestly spot on. And look, you've even got the uh, little sparkles coming off, coming off those little lollies on top. It's really, really good job. Um, I can see many hours went into this, so really well done. However, I think the lighting is letting this one down. It's, uh, the lighting is too orange. It's, I mean, I guess, you know, orange is better than cold for this sort of scene. You want something warm feeling, but it's too orange. It almost feels like it's, I don't know, it's being blinded by an um, orange thing. It's, no, what's the word? It's like, it's, it's analogous maybe, like it's this orangey reddish. You get the point, it's too orange. So how I would fix it is I would add in uh, some different lighting. So I'm just gonna change it here with some curves just to show you what I mean. But I would make the, I would make, I'd increase the, the lighting so it looks a little bit more red for the highlights there, right? Okay, like that. And then, and this is a really easy way to make a nice lighting scheme, is you use warm with cold. So I'm now making the shadows a bluish color. And now, 
you can see that that, that part over here, the, the shadowy area, now has a little bit of color to it, something that isn't just pure orange, right? Um, yeah, and you could you could increase the uh, the brightness a little bit, get a little bit more punchier on the highlights there, just a little bit of quick grading. Um, but yeah, that's uh, honestly it's it's really good. The other thing I would do is just bring out the um, the emphasis on. Uh, so I'll create another. I'll create a light thing and I'll just increase this. This isn't what I'm gonna. I'll show you right, and then I hide that, and then I'll paint with a hardness of that. All right, and then what I'll do. So what I'm trying to say is. If you use, um, if you give more emphasis to the refraction, like give some like like caustics basically. Um, turn that off and then turn on. Where's the thing? What am I looking for? It's a, it's not a shape. Oh, why have I forgotten where it is? Uh, I'll just use that, I guess. Something like that. Ah, I wanted to get tablet pressure, but anyways, like just bring the emphasis to these. Um, this refraction on these lollies here. And you could do it for all of them. And just make it look as though, um, yeah, like it's just being lit a little bit, right? Like you've got light that's shining in and it's sort of hitting the back wall of it and it's sort of got that amplified effect to it. So this is how it looks without that and that's with it on, okay? So I think it just boosts it a little bit, makes it look a little bit more cheerful. Um, and that's, so that, that was the one that we started with and then that's how it is after. So, you know, that's just my thoughts on it, how I would uh, grade it. But honestly, like technically speaking, it's really, really solid. Um, it's just the, the lighting. I, also, I don't know what these little dotted lines are. <laughs> That's the other other minor thing. These little dots there just, I don't know, it just feels odd that it's, how is that printed on that biscuit? It doesn't make much sense to me that it looks like it's been drawn on with a pen, like a felt black pen. So it looks a little odd. but. Anyways, fantastic work, Muhammad. That is a really outstanding image. Well done. All right. This one comes from a Sam Lee, another name I can pronounce. This is one of my 3D design series. Hope that I could get some critiques, help you improve your weaknesses. Awesome. That's what we're all about here. Oh, I wrote some notes. <laughs> um, okay, so first thing. I think that just like the uh, just like Masoud, who had this one here, I feel like yours the, the the framing is totally off. You've got half of it's this sky and there's nothing going on there. So I would bring it right down and I would also crop some of the, the stuff out the front there. All that we really care about is these two worms here, if they are worms. So um, the other thing relating to that point is that, yeah, are they worms or aren't they worms? If they're worms, I think you should have what worms have, which is that little ribbed effect going around them like that. What is going on with my tablet that it's doing that little... Somebody reply in the comments, why is my tablet doing that? Right? <laughs> I hate it. It happens sometimes when I'm drawing. Ah, oh, it's so frustrating. Anyways, it's got that, that you should have ribs along it. It's, it's too smooth. I know you're going for a cartoony look, but it's too smooth. You gotta have some detail there. Even like, you know, look back on like Bugs Bunny and all that kind of stuff. They still have some amounts of detail. So you wanna have those little ribbed lines going across. I don't know what they call it. I'm just gonna call it ribbed. Ribbed for herb? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, you have gotta have, have something there to show that it's actually uh, a worm. The other thing I think would really improve this image is if you gave the worms some eyes. Right? Look at how different it looks. Oh, I gotta turn, I'll turn that off. And then let me turn on my shape dynamics again. I'm sure there's an easy way to do it. I'm just, I'm having a mind blank today. But anyways, look how much better it looks with just like two pairs of eyes. Like you can see they've got a face now as opposed to just being totally blank. And obviously you'd make it black, but anyway. And then you could even give them like a little little face or I don't know, something like little mouth, anything. And even if you just drew it on in Photoshop at the end, um, anything would, would improve it in my opinion. Um, yeah, so do that. And I also, I think the texture on this hat and the other hat is very weird. Like if it's a, if it's a weave, like a basket weave, you gotta have the zigzaggy pattern 
going the other direction as well. You can't just have it all. It would unravel if it, if it was like that. So um, yeah, so I would I would work on that. And again, I know you're going for a cartoony look, but hey, you've got a very realistic handgun there, which is another thing. You've got to stick to a style. So that's a lot of detail going on in a little cartoony gun. Um, I would also get rid of the bullets. Just make it clear. I was trying to erase the bullets. <laughs> erase that thing. Um, I just think, I mean, you can barely see it. It's only when you look at it for a really long time you can even notice a bullet. Um, it just looks like little artifacts in your, and the shell as well. It looks like artifacts in the render. So I would just remove it. Or maybe if you wanted to go cartoony, make them big and bulky and like stupidly dummy, whatever, and then have like a big blast effect going out of it. Or maybe you could even have that flag that says like, bang. Hey, there's an idea. So you've got like the real muzzle flash going out of his gun. And then you've got a, a little flag that says bang out of his one, like Looney Tunes. And then it's like, oh snap, he rigged his gun so that it's, it says something. I don't know. You know, he, he tampered with his gun. So now he's going to win the gun battle. Any sort of story. Because at the moment, they're just both going to die. It's like, I don't know, two dead worms, who cares, <laughs> you know? Um, anyways, I don't know what's going on with the cubes either. Um, I don't like them. I don't like them. Because you've got rocks as well. So you've got real rocks, but then you've also got cubes. Are they in a Salvador Darling painting? I don't quite know what's going on. And it just ruins the silhouette, the readability of the image, going back to that. You want to be able to see, you know... Sorry, you want to be able to see the silhouette, which is that sort of shape, right? But you've got all this stuff going on in the background, so your eye is reading all of that as well. And it's a lot of distraction. Okay, I, yeah, so I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, I would just kill that. And I, yeah, I'd remove the giant air's rock if that's what it is, Uluru in the background. Um, yeah, I don't think you need that there either. But anyways, Sam Lee, thank you for sending in your image. It is a very solid start. I think um, you're definitely on the right track going this cartoony thing. And I do, you know, I have said a lot of negative things about it, but it is a pretty cool image. I like it. I do like the soft little shader of the worm. I think you've got some subsurf going on there as well. Um, it looks pretty cool. Oh, one other thing to give you another little negative kick. I think the posture of the worms... Looks like the first time they've ever held a gun because they're like, where do I put my arm? You know, it's like they've all sort of twisted around themselves. It's like, I don't know. I think you could do something else with the, just give them arms, make them a worm, but give them like two little arms and have them like holding a gun like that. Um, I don't know. It just looks too weird. He's all twisty. It's, um, yeah, not a big fan of that. But anyways, <laughs> thank you, Sam. Uh, that is That is a cool start to the image. Oh, we are at the end of the focus critique, which means I get to critique one of my own renders and rip it to shreds. So this is an image I think I did about five years ago, and we're going to critique it now. So when you open this up, I think first thing that stands out is, well, the tree is the focal element. That's the whole point of this image, because it was for a tree tutorial, Christmas tree tutorial. Um, but you've got these this stuff going on in the background there. And you've also got a phone ringing in my background there. You've got, so I personally, I would remove, personally, Andrew in the future, I would remove all those photos there because I don't think that helps you read the tree. And it's also too distracting, especially to have a face right there. It's not a good idea. Um, I, I do remember I did have a photo of somebody pointing because I was like, okay, I'm going to use the pointing gesture to sort of guide you up to here. Um, but it doesn't really work. Anyway, so I would remove that. Depth-wise on this image, I think it could be improved if you made it so that this wall like came out like that, and that's like the corner of the room, and then you had the fireplace here. So like the fireplace jutting out like up to here, whatever, and you've got the shelf, and you've got the hanging stuff. I'm hoping you guys can understand the perspective from what I'm drawing here. But like the fireplace is now down here. And then you don't have to have this coffee table, which I think that was my attempt of having depth in it. 
um, but you would actually have depth coming from the wall, which is very close to the thing. And you could also get rid of that really distracting chandelier there, which doesn't add anything to the image. So yeah, um, and then because of that also, um, I was never a big fan of this uh, this rock texture. There. It's a really, I think I had a really bad displacement texture and I was just trying to make it work. And it was before micro displacements. So, you know, <laughs> you could go a lot higher res now, but it looks, obviously it looks like a photo. So you would want to use displacement, which is a lot more accurate than what I've got going on there. And it also get rid of that or just make it less apparent, but that whole, um, what do you call these things? The tools that you use to prod the fire with. I think they're too, a bit too obvious there. Um, and also I think personally, the, the color grading for this one could be a lot better if it had like a bit of a warm feeling to it. And at the time I remember thinking like, hey, I wanna make it look like right after this, it snowed and there's that bright sort of cold light coming in through the window. And yeah, yeah, it does have that effect, but it also looks cold. And I think personally Christmas images look a lot better when they are warm. So I don't know if I would do this. Yeah, you go a little bit yellow. It looks a little bit nicer. And I'd maybe, uh, I don't know if that works or not, but I just wanted to make the shadows look a little bit like that. And then maybe you could give a hint of blue. I don't know. I don't know if that improves it or not, but that's something you could do. Um, yeah. So Andrew Price of the past, that is how I would improve your render. So that's it guys. Thank you for watching another episode of Blender Art Critique. <laughs> if you want to uh, send in your render for a future art critique, go to facebook.com forward slash Blender Guru, click the link in the description and then post your image to the page and include the hashtag BGPod. Sorry. <laughs> not the podcast, BG Critique. That was the old uh, podcast uh, Twitter handle. And don't ask me when the podcast is coming back. I'm thinking about it, all right? Um, <laughs> anyways, so that's how you submit it, BG Critique through the Facebook group, not on Twitter. Lots of people saying to me on Twitter, that's not how you do it, the Facebook group. All right, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.